What was your childhood and family life like? I was born on April 1st, 1776 in Paris, France. My parents were Ambrose Francois and Marie Germain. My father was a wealthy merchant and he later became the director of the Bank of France. I was the middle child of three. My house was a meeting place for many people who were interested in reforms, so I was exposed to many philosophical and political discussions. What inspired you to become a mathematician? During the French Revolution, when I was 13, I was cooped up in my house all day due to dangers caused by revolts. I spent a lot of time in my father's library because of this confinement and came upon a book about Archimedes' death. Did you know that when the Romans invaded his city, he was so engrossed with his studies of geometric figures that he didn't respond to a Roman soldier's question, so he was speared? If either of my sisters had heard that, they would have squealed, but not me. I thought it was fascinating. My thought was that if you could be so focused on something that you can block out an invasion, it must be very interesting. How did you begin your research? I found many books in my father's library, and as I was an independent person, I taught myself many things. My parents didn't want me to study mathematics, as they thought it was inappropriate for a female. They even... Which leads me to my next question. What obstacles did you face during your research? Well, my family... They were violently opposed to my studying. They tried to convince me to stop, so I began studying at night by candlelight. They even went as far as to take away my clothes at night and take away my candles, but I showed them. I wrapped myself up in quilts, and I read by candles that I had hidden. When they realized they couldn't stop me, they let me learn, so I did. What was your main accomplishment? I did a lot of studies in number theory, and one of my theorems is most important to Fermi's last theorem. It goes like this. If x, y, and z are all integers, and if x to the fifth plus y to the fifth plus z to the fifth is equal to five, then either x, y, or z must be divisible by five. I also did some important studies in the theory of elasticity. What did you have to do, because you were a woman, to make your studies known? Being a woman was one of my main obstacles. It meant having to use a pseudonym if I was ever to get noticed for my work. In 1794, when I was 18, a school, Ecole Polytechnique, opened in Paris. Its sole purpose was to train mathematicians as scientists for the country, but it was only open for men, of course. So I became friends with some of the students there, and they would loan me some of the lecture notes. My favorite professor was J. L. Lagrange, so I sent a paper on analysis to him at the end of the term. He was so impressed, so impressed, in fact, that he wanted to meet the author. When he realized that I, Sophie Germain, had authored the paper, he was amazed. He then became my mentor. My being known didn't only have to do with me being a woman, but also my social status. It was acceptable for upper-class women to know such things, as it made nice conversation. But for middle class, it was just unheard of. With a respected male to guide me through the fray of mathematical society, I could actually be heard, maybe even respected. Did your location in the world affect what you did and how you did it? I like to think so. If I wasn't in Paris, then I never would have been cooped up in my house because of the French Revolution. If I was never confined to my house, then I never would have read that book about Archimedes, and become inspired to be a mathematician. And even if I had become interested in mathematics, I wouldn't have been by equal polytechnique, so I could never have befriended to the students to get the lecture notes. If I never got the lecture notes, I wouldn't have submitted a paper to J.L. Lagrange, so I wouldn't have been noticed or even respected by anyone. Your most famous correspondence wasn't with Lagrange, though. So who was it with? Joan Carl Frederick Gauss was known as the world's greatest mathematician. I wrote him many letters between 1804 and 1809, using my pseudonym M. LeBlanc, of course. Gauss gave my number theory proofs much praise, but he still thought I was a man. He learned of my being a woman when I quite possibly saved his life. Emperor Napoleon was invading in 1806, and I didn't want the same fate for him as, as had befallen Archimedes, so I sent a general who was also a family friend to save his life. This general told him that he owed his life to me, Sophie Germain. I expected Gauss to be furious and then to stop correspondence, but he did no such thing. In the next letter I sent him, I revealed my true identity, and oddly enough, Gauss seemed happy with me. He was pleased that someone of the opposite gender was interested in mathematics and would overcome such obstacles to study this fine art. Our correspondence ended when he was appointed a professor and no longer bothered to write back. My confidence was utterly crushed, and I left the pure mathematics for studying physics. You submitted an entry in a contest in 1811. What was it about, and did you win? It was 1808 when German physicist Ernst F. F. Chadley visited my home Paris and conducted experiments on vibrating plates. The Institut de France created a competition with the challenge of formulating a mathematical theory 
of elastic surfaces and indicating just how it agrees with empirical evidence. They set a deadline of two years. Many mathematicians did not even bother entering it because it was said that scientific methods were needed above mathematical methods. I decided that I had nothing to lose, so my studies began. My end product was an attempt at the theory of elasticity. My entry was the only one in 1811, so you may think that I won by default, but the judges decided that my work had too many errors, so I was not awarded the prize. They extended the deadline by two more years, so I modified and re-experimented. When the deadline rolled around, my entry was again the only one. My work was apparently improved, but still needed to be improved, so I only got honorable mention. In 1815, they reopened the contest, and I submitted yet another entry. This one was still lacking in perfection, but was deemed worthy of a one kilogram of gold medal. I decided not to go to the award ceremony because the judges did not truly appreciate my work, and the public would still not respect me because I was a woman. And after that, your studies were done, or did you continue them? I continued my experimenting, and in 1825 submitted a paper to a commission of the Institut de France, composed of some famous mathematicians, Simon Denis Poisson, Caspar Claire François Marie Frisch de Prony, Pierre Simon Laplace. Apparently, there were several things incorrect about my paper, but they decided not to tell me. In fact, they simply ignored the paper, refusing to even let me know that they received it. Good thing, little.